Today's project is line travel bags. And if you travel, you're going to want to make a few of these because not only will your clothing and shoes arrive protected, they'll arrive in style. Lori Holt of BMI Bonnet has designed these travel bags and she's here today to show us how to make them. So welcome, Lori. Hi. Well, I love this, your latest fabric line. It's your third Millie's Closet. Thank you. What is your inspiration behind this fabric line? Uh, the inspiration was uh, my grandmother, whose name is Mildred, but everyone called her Millie. And uh, she sewed dresses with her sisters and, a lot of, and gave me the leftover fabric. And so I used it to make doll clothing and to later to make quilts. And some of it is inspired and some, some of the prints come and right I from the fabric. And I love that there's her. this vintage newspaper and purses and uh, these clothes hangers. And this piece is a designer cloth. And tell me, I think it's brilliant because you can take it off the bowl and it looks like it's already been pieced. What was your thoughts of how to use this fabric? Well, I thought it would be really fun to use off the bolt. So you could use it as a quilt itself, quilt it or tie it. You could use it for the back of a quilt. You could use it for a skirt, apprun, pillow, a bag. So uh, such as this one, it already yeah. looks pieced, but it, it isn't. It's just a fat quarter. But I also decided to make these squares this size. They're just a little bit bigger than five inches finished so that you can trim them down to a five inch square and use them in your quilts. Well, because a lot of quilts come yes. call for five inch square fabric. So great idea. So let's um, show me your project of how you made these lined bags. Okay. What you need for the each bag. So this is a two and a half inch across the width of fabric strip and that's what you need to make the tie. Then you need two fat quarters. Uh, you could use a print for the inside. For this one I used a solid. And you need to trim each fat quarter down to 17 inches by 21 inches. Okay. Then you fold each one in half with right sides together this way to prepare for your marking and stitching. Okay. I have these pieces stitched for you. You want to mark an opening in the side uh, approximately five inches to leave it open so that we can turn both the front and the back right sides together out. So what I did was I just marked up about five inches from the bottom and put a little pencil mark and then marked another five inches and a pencil mark, put pins in so that I remember <laughs> to stop stitching there. And I go ahead and start on the bottom of the bag. Always back stitch when you start and stop with these bags. And I come stitch up here, go around the corner with a quarter inch seam allowance the whole time. Stop here, back stitch, continue on over here with the back stitch and up to the top, finishing with the back stitch, leaving the opening at the top and about a five inch opening at the side of the lining. Now for the outside of the bag, we need to leave an opening at the top and we need to leave a one and a quarter inch opening for the casing. So I measure in two inches down, put a little pencil mark on the seam allowance, then I measure another inch and a quarter, put another pencil mark and then I put a pin in there to remind me to stop and I sew from the two inches and then continue down all the way around and sew the bottom closed, leaving this open and your little inch and a quarter casing open. And then you turn that inside out. Yes, you want to leave this one on the outside bag piece after it's stitched. You want to turn it so that the right sides are out. So you've got this little opening right here for the string, but you want to stitch it so that it doesn't unravel when you're putting your string in and out and tying up your bag. So what I did is I just kind of finger pressed the seam open and then I stitched starting here, went down just about an eighth of an inch you see from the outside and then went across the bottom and up just gives so that it's stitched. Yes, gives it added strength and makes it so that it won't unravel. 
And then you pull it inside yes. up. As is. As is. And you want to turn this one with the right side out. And then you just put Because that. you're going to put it inside. You're going to put the outside inside the lining. And then match Once your it's seams. in there, you want to match your seams and pin across the top like this one here. So I pinned this one all the way around the top. I matched up the seams. I left the seams open, pinned them, and I stitched a quarter inch all the way around the top. And now I have my opening in my side. But I can pull this bag out. At this point, you're going to go ahead and tuck in your sides. Tuck in your seam allowances of the opening in the lining and just machine stitch them closed. And then you're going to go ahead and tuck this inside the bag till it's nice and smooth. And the top lines up. Give a nice press. Then you want to give a nice press along these edges. Just like this. Then you're going to want to mark for your casing lines. So how I did my casing is I measured down an inch and a half from the top. And I didn't trace a line on here because I have a line on my machine. But you can put a pencil line uh, very lightly or you can put like an erasable or water soluble pencil line and just mark a line all the way around and stitch around the top and then you go an inch and a quarter from that line because you want your casing to be an inch and a quarter wide and mark another line and stitch all the way around so that looks like this on the inside and you can see on the outside it's all the way around and then you've got your little opening for your drawstring. Now you're ready for your tie. All you do with that is fold it in half lengthwise of your two and a half inch wide strip so that it measures an inch and a quarter and you do your quarter inch seam allowance which will give you an inch wide finished tie. Uh, then you just turn it right side out. You can use your favorite method. I always use a safety pin and I just pin it in here and then thread it through until it's right side out. And I give it a nice press and then on the edges I tuck the edges in and then just do a little stitch across there. Then I can put it in the bag. And again I just use a safety pin and thread it through keeping it flat as I go. Then you even up your ties. Yes, as they come out, I even up my ties. And I do a stay stitch right here with a small zigzag so across my ties and through my casing so that my ties will not come out and they will stay even because I made them long enough so that you can tie a nice, nice bow. Look at so that, that makes it just a little bit cuter. And then there's so many fun things you can put in them. And it really, I, want, I brought all this stuff, traveling items, to show how much you can really put into these bags. And these shoes. So all these. My daughter uses these bags for her dance. She's been dancing since she was three, and she competes. And a lot of times, she has to do a quick hair change between dances. And needs to put a hair piece in, or some yeah. makeup, or and you know, look things how like much that. You can fit so she into keeps that. keeps all of her dance items in separate bags inside of her large dance bag, so that backstage sh they're easy access. And they, don't these shoes just match perfectly with that? And these are such a great thing. You can travel in style. And we're so glad Lori's here today to show us how to make these. And thanks, Lori, for dropping by. Thank you for having me.